Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. Welcome back to another brand new episode of Fun and Games Side Quests. I am the series creator, one of the producers for Fun and Games, and the host for this episode, Matt Storm, aka Stormageddon. And I am so excited to be doing one of the first side quests of 2023, talking about one of my favorite games from 2022. Today, we're here to talk about Sonic Frontiers. For those who don't know, if you haven't followed the main podcast or pay attention to me on Twitter literally at all, you may not know that I am a giant Sonic fan. I've been playing the Sonic games since I could hold a controller. I owned the Sega Genesis. It was one of the first consoles I asked for by name, which came with a copy of, I believe, Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, or at least I got both games when I got the system. Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the original release, is one of my favorite 2D platforming, running, jumping games of all time. Knuckles is one of my favorite video game characters of all time, and I have a long and storied history with the franchise. We did an episode last year about the state of the Sonic franchise before Sonic Frontiers came out, and then it did come out. And while the reviews for it were kind of mixed, amongst most Sonic fans, especially 3D Sonic fans, it was a return to form of fun in the Sonic franchise. Now, I didn't even touch on the Sonic 3D games, but like I love Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, I love Sonic Generations. Sonic Forces was fine. The 3D series has had ups and downs, but I loved where it started, and I do enjoy a ton of the 3D platformer versions of Sonic. But the franchise as a whole has been kind of hit or miss while the movies and the new Netflix series have been going strong. It had had some missteps, and so everyone was a little tentative, hesitant, whatever word you want to use, about Sonic Frontiers. But I was cautiously excited and when I got my hands on it finally I absolutely loved this game so a little background on Sonic Frontiers it is a 3d platformer and action adventure game it is an open zone game there are several zones throughout the game that you play and it's not a giant open world like say your Skyrim or your Breath of the Wild but it is in that vein as far as the mobility and the space you can move through as Sonic you get to explore Starfall Islands, you get to go into cyberspace. It's a brand new story with some of your favorite characters. Well, I don't want to go too much into the story because I think it's actually worth experiencing for yourself. This game shows so much growth and not just Sonic as a character, but all of his friends, Amy, Knuckles, Tails, and so on. Even Dr. Robotnik, aka Eggman. And that has been one of the most satisfying things for me is to see an evolution in all of these characters. It's really actually quite incredible. From a gameplay perspective, I love this game because you get to explore these open areas running super fast as Sonic. You, If you max out your ring count, which I think at default is 400, you get like this hyper boost and on hyper speed blue glow and an unlimited boost. The boost isn't as powerful here as it been in other 3D Sonic games, especially during the boost era, because they wanted you to upgrade it and they wanted to like have stuff to gain. And while I know I'm a little over the place, staying with the gameplay before we talk about some of the other things I love, the reason I absolutely love this Sonic game, even though it is definitely imperfect and definitely a start to something that could be even better, the open world exploration as Sonic, running, jumping, collecting things, is always fun. And I've talked about this on Fun and Games a bunch. The gameplay loop is important, but the core gameplay loop in a larger game is the most important thing. And the reason I love Breath of the Wild until it became too much for me, I loved Skyrim, why I ended up loving Elden Ring last year, is because the basic exploration was always fun to do. And Sonic Frontiers has that in spades. Whether you're doing side-scrolling 2D, jumping through hoops, obstacles, you're running around the world in 3D, you're solving puzzles to open up the map, collecting MacGuffins to help your friends. All of that stuff through the exploration of the open zones is so much fun and never got boring. I was collecting tons of stuff because you need a lot of these icons, whatever they're called, these they're shaped like hearts or keys or wrenches or whatever else to help your friends who are stuck in this like digital in-between world. And it never got boring to collect that stuff. I didn't 100% complete this game, but I got through the entire story and did do a ton of collecting. But all in all, it was fun to play a 3D Sonic game again because the biggest problem with stuff like Sonic Generations, even though I liked it, and then of course Sonic Forces later, which was exacerbated, is 
there were forced 2D Sonic sections playing as classic Sonic. There were you played a created character who had this weird gun and had weird platforming, but also most of the running stages were super cliche. And I would say that's where this game also kind of falls behind. You go into cyberspace to get keys to unlock the Chaos Emeralds, and ultimately that stuff gets pretty repetitive. The cyberspace levels get pretty repetitive, but I never didn't enjoy them. Collecting the Chaos Emeralds is great. That's another mechanic that I love. In most games, Supersonic is like this thing for the final boss battle or this thing locked behind getting all the Chaos Emeralds towards the end of the game. But in this game, there are boss battles. You fight Titans throughout the game, and every time you fight a Titan, you turn into Supersonic, which is awesome because you get to use this version of Sonic that's so ingrained in the lore and culture of this character for every single boss battle, and they make it fresh every time you do it. All in all, I had a really good time with this game, and it goes beyond just the gameplay, though that's what I think this game does best. As I mentioned earlier, the story is really engrossing. It shows growth within the characters on an individual level, especially with so many classic characters like Tails and Knuckles. Fortunately, Shadow's nowhere to be found, as well as some of the later characters. Big is here, but he's locked off to just specific fishing sections, which are actually kind of fun. You wouldn't think I would really enjoy fishing in a Sonic game, but it was actually kind of a lot of fun to do here. But, like, narratively, I think there's a lot to this game and a lot of the classic voice actors who are doing it that this connects to chaos from the original Sonic Adventure series in interesting ways. It's just really the narrative here, which I, again, don't want to go too far into to spoil, really does play with some stuff and pays a ton of homage to the past of Sonic the Hedgehog and his friends, and I really appreciated that. Before kind of giving a summation and wrapping this up, I really want to talk about the music. The music for this game is incredible. The ambient music that plays while you're exploring each of the islands or zones is always really beautiful or wistful or kind of contemplative. It, it's chill in a similar way that like the soundtrack to Breath of the Wild was pretty chill, which I'm going to make a, a comparison point often just because it's a touch point for a ton of people, especially in the current gen of console gaming. But it made it for a really enjoyable and kind of serene experience. And then when you got to the boss battles, they had these incredible heavy metal tracks that, you know, had shades of Devil May Cry, this kind of kick-ass anthem as you're flying around as supersonic fighting these titans. It's one of the best soundtracks in a Sonic game in a long time. And Sonic games, often the music is like the best part. But this definitely kicked it up a notch for especially the modern stuff. Like Sonic Forces and I would say even Sonic Generations, the music was mostly either forgettable or just redos of classic songs, which are always good to hear again. Um This was such a relief considering also this came out the same year as Sonic, the Sonic Origins collection, which was fine, but did some stuff to kind of ruin my favorite game, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, by losing the rights to the original music for some of it, and so they had to make these filler tracks that weren't good and ruin that game since the Sonic 3 and Knuckles has one of my favorite soundtracks of all the Sonic franchise. But this game comes out swinging and has some of the best music in the franchise's history in this game. There are some things that are a little annoying, like there's a lot of pop in when you're exploring, but honestly, it didn't really bother me. Graphical issues in a game like this, if I'm enjoying the main gameplay loop of just running around and jumping as Sonic, that doesn't really matter that much. To kind of wrap up the control conversation, I do want to talk about the combat in this game, which I think overall was fine. You kind of have attacks that are reminiscent of Sonic's kind of moveset in Smash Brothers. A lot of punching and kicking and spinning and like launching. The homing attack is back, but it's on a different button. The control scheme required getting used to in this game because they had to reassign some stuff so you could boost and do some of the other special moves. But all in all, I didn't mind the combat. It did get annoying towards late game because... There are certain enemies that were annoying, but all in all, the combat was actually kind of mindless but fun. And ultimately, that's kind of all I could ask for, at least in a game where I really want to just dive in and enjoy it. I think that I've kind of been a little all over this place because it's kind of this nebulous full experience of this Sonic game that I really pulled me in. But ultimately, the exploration and the, the base gameplay loop was all I needed. And I think... If you are a Sonic fan who has been waiting to jump into this and to really dive into a new Sonic game because 
the previous ones haven't been as good, I think you should take a chance on this, especially post holidays if it's on sale, because it really the base level of this game is a lot of fun. And while there are some annoying things worth nitpicking, ultimately it's really fun to play this large scale Sonic game and is the definite ground level for a brand new franchise of 3D Sonic games that could be really incredible. This could have used some more time in the oven, but ultimately I felt it was important to talk about with side quests because this series, as I created it initially, was to talk about a game you love and why you love it. I think this exemplifies what I want this series to be. This is an imperfect game that I absolutely love. And while, yes, I have some complaints and it wasn't a perfect game, ultimately, I had fun. I loved it. And a lot of people wanted to write this game off because they really thought that it just wasn't worth it because of the graphical issues and some other things. But I think that's really not a good enough reason this day and age to not take on a game because graphics aren't everything, especially because the playing of the game is what's meant to be the fun part. I'm really excited for the future of the Sonic franchise. Um, this is literally on everything, I think. It's on Nintendo Switch, though I've heard it doesn't run as smoothly on there, but still works pretty well. It's on PS4, PS5, Windows, Xbox One, S Xbox Series X and S. And I played it on the PS5, and besides the occasional pop-in, ran perfectly. I had little to no issue with it. So if you've been waiting again to pick up the Sonic game because of all the negativity you had heard around it, I am telling you, give it a shot. Please check it out because while, again, it is far from what I think the next best Sonic game could be, it's on the right track. And ultimately, if you go in with an open mind, I think you could really enjoy yourself with this because I know I really did. I just want to take a moment as I wrap up this episode because we're about to go into episode 200 after this that I can't believe I've produced 200 episodes of this series. I'm so grateful for the response I constantly get for this series, all of the compliments and folks saying that they really love the idea, people excited to do an episode, jump in on it. I've had some incredible people do episodes in this series and working to get many more incredible people to work on it as well. But thank you so much for your kindness and support over the years. We really love doing this for you. We have something super cool and awesome to announce this Friday for our year in review, which is the next episode that is going to be in this feed. So stay tuned for that. But thank you for listening as I talked your ear off about what is the greatest Sonic game in a long time and hopefully a tent pole for what we're going to get in the future. I have been Matt, aka Stormageddon. I am the series creator and producer. You can find me on most social media platforms as DJ underscore Stormageddon. Please say hi to me if you follow me in one of those places. Check out all the stuff I work on at www.djstormageddon.com. And thank you so much for listening to this episode and episodes past, present, and future. And happy gaming. Hey there, Screen Beans. Have you heard about Screen Snark? Rachel, this is an ad break. They aren't screen beans until they listen to the show. Fine. Potential screen beans. You like movies and TV shows, right? I mean, who doesn't? Screen Snark is a casual conversation about the movies and television shows that are shaping us as we live our everyday lives. That's right, Matt. We have a chat with at least one incredible guest every episode, hailing from all walks. We've interviewed chefs, writers, costumers, musicians, yoga teachers, comedians, burlesque dancers, folks in the film and TV industry, and more. We'd be delighted for you to join us every other Monday on the Certain POV Podcast Network. Or wherever you get your podcasts, fresh and tasty off the presses. What? what? That's, no, that's not... Can I call them Screen Beans now? Fine. Screen Beans! So tune in and we'll see you at the movies or on a couch somewhere. Because you're a whole Screen Beans now. You will be mine. Aurora! CPOV! CertainPOV.com